Hi, this is Lou Joseph with Remax Preferred Realty. Just coming to you today to talk about July 2020 and what went on in the real estate market. Uh, this past month, July, was pretty challenging for some of the buyers that I've been working with. Uh, we had seen many homes uh, selling above $100,000 above the asking price. Now, um, maybe a year back or a year or two back, $100,000 would have been a rare occurrence, but it just uh, it's not surprising anymore, especially if uh, a house is priced uh, around two fifty or uh, you know three hundred. So it's very definitely very active. Interest rates are still low and look looks like they're inching lower. So you can definitely fix uh, a great rate. And uh, what people are thinking about here is, you know, they're thinking about the monthly payment to obtain a property, not so much the price. So with rents going up in the local area we find that people are, are comparing what their mortgage and uh, mortgage payment with insurance and property tax. If that payment is smaller than renting, people will opt to buying versus renting. So that's the, the, that's the number that they're focusing on, monthly cost, holding cost. So if the house is 300,000 and there's 20 offers on it and we have to go to 400,000 to secure the sale, uh, they're looking at the monthly payments. So that's that's the logic that's going behind that. Um, now, uh, sellers are in a very good position right now with a very high demand. I believe that we're the the highest demand in uh, basically in, in Canada as far as as far as supply and demand and, and how much uh, homes are selling above asking. So I just want to go over some of the numbers with you. I like, I like facts, I like data, and I hope you do too. So we're going to go over that, and uh, you let me know what you think. Okay? All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here at the Windsor-Essex County Association Realtors website, uh, where we're going to go over the July 2020 report. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is market activity, and this is the listings. So we see here July of this this year compared to last year, our listings were down uh, 11, 11 and a quarter percent. So we see the trend here. Uh, basically, uh, listings are down most months, you know, starting with April. Uh, we had a couple months here where the listings were a little higher in February and March. But because of the pandemic, this is where we got the drop off. So we're seeing that listings are coming back into the market. So they were trending upwards, not quite as what they were last year, but they're, they're getting better. So we'll see what August looks like. Now, year to date, we see year to date, uh, our listings are down a little over 15 and a half percent. Um, you know, that's pretty much expected with the month over month numbers that we saw. And over here in sales uh, for July, our sales actually increased by a little over 5% compared to July of last year. So when we look at the sales numbers, the, the two months where sales were higher um, compared to the months last year was July and February. The rest of the months we had sales declined month over month, um, you know, these two months especially. So I, I, I believe that the sales that were supposed to happen in these two months are happening in these two months here. So I would believe that in August, the sales numbers will be pretty strong as well. Now, uh, sales year to date, we're down 13.6%, uh, 0.69%. Um, yeah, that's expected for what we went through to this year. Now, when we talk about sales going down, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad market and prices are going down. It means that we had a lack of inventory, uh, so not many homes are up for sale and the demand was still high. So we had a lot of bidding action because of the fact that the inventory is low and we'll, we'll see that soon enough in the average, average price here for July of uh, 2020. We see that the average price was up almost 25%. So we see that we're at $427,107 and that is uh, basically a, a monthly record here uh, when we're looking at our data. 
Uh, we see here that these two months, March, March and April, we were down obviously uh, in average price, but we've, we've steadily climbed upwards. And average price year to date is 16 and a little over 16 and a half percent. So we're almost getting to the year to date average price of 400,000. So we're at 390,000, which is huge considering, uh, you know, 10 years ago, we were at 150, 55,000 uh, average price. So basically our average price doubled or more than, more than doubled, obviously, uh, in the last 10 years. So uh, we have a lot of demand, we have low vacancies, a lot of people migrating into Windsor, and, and this is what's causing the whole uh, supply demand uh, chain uh, the, way, the way it is right now with uh, people wanting to come into Windsor, wanting to invest into Windsor, a lot of migration here as well. Now we look at uh, July stats here for which price ranges were uh, the most popular here. So we see that 420 to 550, we had the most sales, 167 sales for homes in that price range, and then followed by 300 to 360. So this is a really strong area where uh, a lot of sales have, have occurred in July. So 300 to 550. And if we look at the data year to date, we see the same thing. This show, it reflects the same thing, uh, 300 to, to 5, 550. Now the the lower price ranges here, if if you have listings in this price range here, we are seeing incredible amount of bidding happening, uh, bidding wars happening in this in these price ranges. So what happens is, if you have a house that is say uh, listed for one ninety nine, uh, it could be selling at at two sixty or two eighty, uh, and then the sales numbers would pop into this category, right? Uh, if you see uh, properties that are listed two two ninety nine and they're selling for four fifty or four hundred, that would inch up those numbers into this category. So we have listings in in these in these categories and in, in these price ranges, but the sales data, the sales numbers are in these categories right here. So uh, you know you will see these these list prices, but a lot of times uh, what the strategy is is, and unfortunately. This is the strategy that uh, sellers and agents are, are taking part of is underpricing property. You underprice it and you get the, the most amount of action, most amount of showings, and then you get uh, the highest price possible that you, you can get for that type of property. If you were to maybe, so if, it, so if it, you've priced at $299 and it sells for $450 or $400, um, if you were to take that same property and price at $400, you know, uh, you may not get the same results as if you were to put it for, say, two ninety nine or two fifty, or some some a number like that. So by severely underpricing property, you evoke a lot of emotion in buyers, and they just want to win, and they will basically do whatever it takes to win and and go in at a very high price. Also, what it, another thing to consider is that if somebody's approved that, say, three hundred thousand for for a mortgage. Uh, you know they're not going to be looking. In most of the cases they're not going to be looking at homes that are, that are listed for two ninety nine. They're going to be looking at homes that are listed for two fifty or two twenty five because they want room to raise their their bid bid price. So that sometimes pricing a, a property right at the value is almost a negative thing because, uh, like I said, people approved at these higher prices are looking below because they they see what's happening with the market. Uh, that being said. Um, you know, if you're approved at say 300,000, and you see a house that's uh, that's priced at 299, and it's been three weeks, you know, uh, you you may want to entertain looking at that that property and, and possibly uh, you know putting an offer on it. Uh, you know that that's uh, another strategy that uh, you can definitely take advantage of as well. Okay, so now we're going to look at a few statistics that I, I like to go through. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the list price to uh, sale price ratio. So we're going to select that. We're going to look at Windsor, Essex County, um, just a general sweep of the whole area. And uh, we're going to just select, make sure we select residential and commercial as property types. So we're going to stick with mostly the residential. We're not going to get so much into farm and multifamily and so forth. So we're going to generate this report. And here we see obviously the chart is going upwards on this. And if we break down the data numbers on it, 
Uh, we're seeing that in Windsor, Essex County, on average, in July, the homes are selling 5.8% above asking. So we're seeing over here, uh, we have 3.4 all the way down to uh, 5.8 here. Uh, this is pretty healthy number. Again, like 105.8 means that you know it uh, went 105.8% uh, above the price uh, or above the price, right? So 5.8%. And we're looking here in 2015, and on average, homes were selling below list price anywhere around uh, four to four and a half percent. And uh, we didn't really get into the full price uh, on average until until 2017. 2018, you see mostly full price and starting inching upwards a bit. 2019 was was a bigger year, and then obviously this year is a big year as well. Now, if we narrow down the areas, we'll see that uh, in Windsor, LaSalle, Tecumseh, the numbers are are different. So if we take a look here, uh, we're going to take a look and we're going to see that uh, the data shows that in July, on average, for residential properties, uh, they were selling 10% uh, above the list price on average. And uh, we've seen some pretty good months here. We've seen February, March, uh, 115 and 116 here. And again, we see the same kind of trends throughout the years as well. Uh, if we break down break down the area a little bit more, we want to take a look at, say, South Windsor. And we just generate the report there. Uh, we see that in South Windsor, the numbers aren't as, uh, you know, for July, aren't as impressive. It's still impressive, but not as much as, uh, Windsor, Essex County, and uh, and Windsor, Tecumseh, and uh, LaSalle as a whole. Uh, South Windsor now has become a little less affordable for first-time buyers. So we're seeing now uh, homes in, in July uh, sold 2.7% uh, above the list price. And uh, we had a really hot month here in March. But basically in South Windsor right now, you, you can't enter that market under 300 at all it could be a rare chance that you had some kind of tear down or something but uh, basically even for a fixer upper you're spending 330 so uh, you know most first-time buyers uh, their budget isn't at that number so the we're gonna probably see these numbers moderate a bit as list price uh, get get risen into uh, into South Windsor as they rise you know we're gonna see the, the these numbers a little bit more moderate and then we're gonna go we're going to take a look in LaSalle here, generate the report, and we're going to look at, and we're pretty much at 3.3% uh, 3 .3 above list price. The last uh, previous month was 7.2. Pretty decent numbers here. Uh, we see a lot of the 100% the here in the beginning of the year. This was probably mostly due to some of the new construction. Um, when you buy new construction, you're basically paying retail. You're paying, basically paying full price. And you may add on some options and so forth. So this is uh, where a lot of sales are happening in, in new construction with Sal. We do get some resale, uh, but there's far and few of them. So we do see a huge demand for this area. Definitely a really growing community. Great place. Uh, if you want to take a look now, let's just like take a look at Tecumseh. And we'll generate the report here. So for Tecumseh, it's a, it's a really strong market. There's a really high demand. There's not a whole lot of you know new development pretty much there's there isn't uh more more lakeshore but in in uh in tecumseh it's pretty much mostly built up so we see here that it's going to be a lot of mostly resale homes that have been selling and in july on average it's 14 percent above list price so that's a pretty big number pretty impressive number we had another 14 percent here in march and uh february it was uh 22 so very strong mark. If you're looking into Tecumseh, there's not a lot of inventory and there's a lot of people that want to move out there. So you're going to have to be pretty aggressive with your offers if you're a buyer. If you're a seller, you got to consider that you are in a pretty, pretty good market right now. If you have to sell something and you're thinking about waiting, I don't know how much I'd wait on it. I don't know how much these numbers can go up from here. Hard to say. But again, you know, look at the data. Markets go up. And markets moderate and then they do come down it's a business cycle and uh, real estate has a cycle as well so we're looking back five years ago and you do see house, houses were selling on average below list price so it's just uh, the, the signs of the time and you have to basically react make your decisions on what's happening in the market today
So I just brought up those two, those actually those three areas that are, are pretty, pretty decent areas to look at data in. Uh, you know, if you want me to pull up any data as far as Amherstburg, Essex, Kingsville, uh, you know, I do do that for clients if they're if they're wondering as as far as some some data. We can definitely open up the different uh, areas, right? You have Kingsville, Leonton, uh, wherever you're thinking about Windsor, Essex County. So now let's just look at historic uh, price trends, and we're gonna do about we're gonna do kind of do the same thing here. We're gonna look at Windsor, Essex County. Actually, we're gonna go back here because I have to select these two here: residential and condominiums. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, we see a sideways market from January 2010 to 2015. You know, prices went sideways to slightly upwards, and then we shot shot up through the moon here. So we're looking at data here. Look at 2010 in January. Our average sale price was 136,000, and in July it shows 380. Well, actually, the other data showed 390. That the previous uh, data I showed you, but I believe that was mixing in um, other properties, you know, farm and possibly some commercial. So this is uh, this is where we at with the residential and condominiums as far as the median uh, sale price. Okay, so this is the median, and you see a huge difference here. So when it comes to investing in real estate, mentality is, for some, they want to make money today. But if you were patient and you bought and you held for 10 years, this is where the true wealth is made, when you're holding real estate for a decade, two decades, three decades, right? So it's a, it's a long-term game. I don't believe in getting rich quick in real estate. Uh, I know that there's people selling courses and talking about it. And it, I think with everything that comes quick like that, there's some risks. You know, you're borrowing people, you borrow money from people, you don't vendor take backs, you're trying to do some wholesaling, trying to, you know, get, get properties below market. Um, you know, there's some risk involved in there. And, and, and sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's a needle in a haystack, you know. Um, but if we look at buy and hold for a decade, you can just basically have bought mostly any property in a decent area. Like you could have just bought some, a ranch in South Windsor or, La, or LaSalle or East Windsor. And, you know, maybe you felt like you overpaid in 2010, but compared to where you are now 10 years later, you more than made enough. And you got some rent for 10 years. And then on top of that, you um, basically got some capital gains. So real estate's a long-term thing. Now, if we want to break down a couple of uh, areas, let's just let's just break down a couple areas like we did last time. So let's let's go to South Windsor. We'll generate this report here, and we'll look at the data. And in South Windsor, uh, 2010 average price in January was 177,000. Now we're at 4 420. Okay. So uh, this definitely had a huge uh, increase over the decade. Now we're gonna take a look at, uh, we're gonna take a look at LaSalle, see what happened here. Okay, so we're gonna look here, average price, it's similar to South Windsor, you know, South Windsor and LaSalle, they're very, have some things in common. Uh, 175, now we're at 482, wow. So 482, this is a reflection again on the new construction, a lot of luxury new construction being built in LaSalle, more so than South Windsor, more so than any other areas, I, I feel like. You do have some luxury stuff going up in East Windsor and Lakeshore, but I think LaSalle is, is basically where where it's at for, for luxury homes right now, uh, new construction. Now, if we take a look at uh, Tecumseh, let's see what Tecumseh's numbers are. So if you were buying a house in Tecumseh in 2010, your average price would have been 190,000. Uh, today it's 435,000. Uh, the list of price ratio is higher in Tecumseh, more, than, more so than in LaSalle. Um, so we don't see a higher a number as high as LaSalle. And again, let's do the new construction. Okay, so let's see what else we can find, play around with here. 
Okay, so we went through basically the historic sales, we went through sale price to list ratio, and then we're gonna go average days on market. That's a nice one to look at. So we're gonna again select residential and commercial. Let's go into it and see what we find. Okay, so the the blue line is the list price. It's showing that list price is going up and and it shows that average days are actually median days on markets to sell it's going down so if we click the data back in uh, 2015 the average median days to sell was 41 days so if you priced your property reasonable and uh, you're in you know, a decent area in Windsor Essex County we're talking about general 41 days to sell and the average list price back then was 176,000. This is five, basically a little over five years ago. Let's fast forward. So as we see these numbers from 41, 23 in December of 2016, and then fast forward to today. So July, 2020, the median days on market is 11 days. The, uh, the basically the list price median if we see it rising, we see that we are at 349.9. This is not sales price, this is the list price. Obviously, some price at 349 is going to be selling maybe at 400 or 450, right? Or or depending on, on the area in the house, right? So 11 days is pretty good. You know, when you see 11 days on market, median days is good. We had 10 over here in March. That was a really hot month. And uh, if we scroll upwards, we see another 10 here in May, May of last year. We see um, 11 days in Ju June of last year. So we got a lot of these months here where it was 11 days on market. Oh, look at this one, nine days. That was March of 2018. But we do see a lot of 11, okay? Now let's see what we can find in uh, basically those three areas that I like to focus on. Uh, South Windsor, average day list price. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So in January of 2015, uh, the median days to sell was two, 22. So better than the average. The list price was higher than than the the median of Windsor Essex County at 219. Let's fast forward to today. 13 days on uh, on average, or on the median uh, for for a home to sell. In South Windsor, with the median uh, sale, uh, list price at three seventy nine nine. Okay, so thirteen is good. Anywhere, anywhere from ten to fifteen is 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 amazing, really. And we have a lot of those days here. Uh, we have um, some these months here where the median was nine days. And look at this one here in March of two thousand eighteen. That was a good month here. Six days. On uh, on uh, the median was six days to sell. Okay, so you can imagine big price jumps when when this number is low, you have big price jumps in that market because houses sell very quickly and everybody's rushing to buy them and they're piling their offers on top of each other. So that's what that means. Uh, when we look back here, uh, March of 2017, so South Windsor really was strong, basically. Um, the whole time, the, whole, the last five years. You know, we see here, even in 2016 of April, the median was nine. So when you're looking at investing in real estate and you're investing, you, you don't get so much, I, I don't think you get so much cash flow in an area like this, but you do see huge capital appreciation. So if you're buying, say, a ranch in South Windsor and you're renting it out, you may see a very low uh, monthly cash flow on it but you're going to see capital appreciation of price rising because these are the markets where there's price stability and and uh, and prices do rise in these areas a little stronger but if you were to say buy a ranch and say uh, the, you know some other parts i don't want to mention areas but you know some other parts of windsor you may cash flow more but uh, there's going to be high volatility in the price like i've seen homes back in 2000 and Eight to 2010, where uh, actually it was one particular home. It was 75. It was purchased for 75,000, 
at the peak of the market, I think it was 2006 or seven, I can't remember. But when I when it sold, it sold for 25,000. And this area is in one of those areas that when, you know, when there's a downturn, it gets hit hard. So you, you're, you're giving up uh, stability and uh, price increase versus uh, cash flow in some of these some of these areas. So let's just take a look. I'm going to take a look again in uh, LaSalle here. I'm going to look at data here. So 44 days on average, or on the median days to sell in 2015. Fast forward to today, it's uh, 14 with the median uh, list price at 489,000. Actually, our median was very high here in January early, earlier this year at almost, yeah, basically 600,000. And one more. We're going to take a look here in Tecumseh. So Tecumseh in 2015, January, 45 days. Now it's eight days with the median list price, 449,000. And we see that this, this remains a pretty strong market. You're under 10 in a lot of these months as far as days to sell, okay? So that's basically just a quick overview on a few statistics that I go over to show you what kind of market we're in. Days to sell, average price trends, uh, sale price to list price ratio. I believe those three are definitely something to look over. Now we can really pinpoint it. Like say you're looking for a raised ranch in in South Windsor. We can go in and we can we can click uh, Windsor. You know we can click uh, South Windsor, and then we can click raised ranch, and then now we can pull up some uh, you know some information here. So if we look at some data here, we see this is the data for raised ranches in South Windsor. And we see that this remains a pretty strong market for raised ranches in South Windsor. So we can be really specific to get an idea like what your home, how, it, it, what your home is expected to sell for, how many days on market that they'll, they'll sell for. Um, okay, so that's it for this month. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you, you sat through it all. Uh, I know it's a lot of information, but uh, if you want just a, a basic overview and you don't want to go through all the stats and you want to get an idea of specifically what your home is worth in your in your neighborhood or what some homes uh, are selling for in your neighborhood, you can definitely give me a call or, or send me an email and I'd be glad to help you out in any way I can. Again, if you're looking to buy as well, I'd be glad to offer some advice to you as well that this is a very challenging market here and uh, it takes a lot of work uh, to get the right property for you. And uh, I'm here for you. Any questions you need, just feel free to give me a call, 519-817-0887. I'm glad uh, you joined me today and uh, I hope to hear from you someday soon. Take care.